If you ever see a dev running a Vim, Tmux, and ZSH setup with Arch Linux OS, you know that dev is cracked out of their goddamn mind. No mouse. Straight raw dogging a loud, clanky mechanical keyboard with surgical precision that looks like a piece of rubble split in half. He has three curved monitors and yaps about how he went to MIT, interned at Shopify at age 11, and his first language was Fortran, not English. His first words were not mama and dada, it was hash map. You know who I'm talking about, he works a 5 to 9 after his 9 to 5, where he's building a custom compiler or operating system from scratch. He runs a Y Combinator backed startup on the side with a $50 million evaluation that isn't just another ChatGPT wrapper or spaghetti monolith that is AI generated slop from Gemini. This is the guy that sees code as an extension of thought, and he sure as heck knows his way around an IDE. More often than not, he's using Vim, not VS Code, not Cursor. You probably know Vim as the editor that is damn near impossible to exit out of. Or you might know Vim as being the superior version of Emacs. But for 99% of you, you don't know how to navigate Vim to its true potential. Maybe the absolute basics. Let's look at how much easier it is to prefix all of the user struct fields in Vim. You start by hitting Ctrl V to enter visual block mode, 3J to select three lines down, and then Shift I to enter insert mode. You type the user string prefix, and finally hit escape to apply the change to all lines. A typical dev workflow would involve going line by line to append the string prefix to each of the struct fields. This is just a simple optimization of how Vim can save you time. Take this small optimization multiplied by the thousands of microtransactions that you do every single day, and you can see that the engineering time savings increases exponentially. Sure, you can argue that these microtransactions are not really a true engineering bottleneck, just like your typing speed, but mastery in one area can quickly spread. Some people will say, okay, 80% of the time I'm interfacing with horizontal teams or stakeholders or doing some complex system design. But who doesn't want to type at 140 words per minute and execute Vim motions at a blazing fast pace? Okay, but maybe I haven't convinced you yet. I'm not a Vim power user. Let's look at someone who's actually cracked at Vim. If I go six down, jump to definition, this thing has the word controllers down here. If I use alternate file, this thing has controllers over here. Let's use harpoon, jump back to pages. You can see we don't want this. This kind of sucks, right? So let's go up to the top and let's go public const controllers, which is a ampersand string. We'll do that. Let's highlight, yank, paste, F capital C, D, C, I, W for cut out word, views, CI double quotes for cut out inside of quotes, type in the word views, hit save, harpoon our way all the way back. If you are interested in taking your software engineering skills to the next level, I would encourage you to build projects. I'm not talking about going down the rabbit hole of tutorial hell and building a to-do list, calculator, or weather app. I'm talking about building complex real world projects beyond the basics. And this is where Code Crafters comes in. This platform provides interactive tools to build developer tooling from scratch. There are a number of courses that teach building Git from scratch, building an in-memory Redis database, an HTTP web server, your own Docker, your own DNS server, and many others. I personally love that there is built-in support for over 20 different languages. My favorite, of course, is Golang, but I would highly recommend trying a newer language like Zig as well. I'm excited to announce that I'm partnering with Code Crafters to offer all my viewers 40% off. For more details, you can find a link in the description down below as well as the pinned comment.